Okay, so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming. It's nice to see you all. So just starting to allow yourself to come into a nice comfortable space again, either seated or lying down. Just make sure you feel you've got enough space and you can really relax wherever you are. We're going to start with just um, a very simple meditation just to tune into the meridian lines that we're working today. Um, so you can start to get a, a feel for where the body is at this moment in time and how the body feels in these areas that we've been working through the meridian system. So we're working the liver and gallbladder and the, the liver meridian line is our yin element and the gallbladder is our yang. So the yin travels up the body and the yang travels down the body. So just bearing that in mind. So just start to allow your eyes to come into a very soft gaze or just gently closing down through the eyes. And just taking a few nice deep breaths into the body, allowing the belly to expand. And as you exhale, just sign the breath out through pursed lips or a sigh. And really allowing the breath to fill up, inflate into the body. And as you exhale, feel a little bit more softness, releasing and letting go. So moving us into a yin state, moving into softening, surrendering, drawing the awareness and energy into the body. And allowing ourselves to come into a space that's more reflective, more accepting. And more compassionate. Just take a moment to really settle into how your body feels. Acknowledging physically how your body feels as you sit or lay. And just taking a sweeping scan from the head to the feet or other way so we can check in and acknowledge how our physical body is doing today. Noticing for any areas that are sending signals or messages so that we can practice in a very compassionate and kind way. And drawing your awareness to the space that you're in. And to allow yourself to melt a little bit further into the atmosphere that you're in, acknowledging any sounds that you can hear other than the music and my voice. Acknowledging the temperature of the room, Noticing the weight of the body supported by the earth beneath you. So you know if you can allow yourself to just relax a little bit further into that support. And gently guiding your awareness the breath coming back into your body. Acknowledging as you breathe in a slightly cooler breath, traveling through the nostrils, and down into the belly, so the belly inflates and expands. Try not to hold any tension through the abdominal muscles or the rib cage. And as you exhale, feeling a gentle pull and lift of the abdomen, Diaphragm, the rib cage coming back into the center. Squeeze the breath out, and you might feel this is a slightly warmer breath in the upper lip or in the nostrils. Just 
coming here to allow ourselves to really ground into our body, into the space. Finding mindfulness of how the breath moves within us and around us. By coming into this space of the breath, we allow ourselves to come into the present moment. Accepting of everything that we feel throughout our practice today. Helping us to acknowledge all that arises. Without judgment, without prejudice. Without any irritation. We can allow ourselves to become the observer, the witness of what's happening within us. And any time that we feel overcome or overwhelmed by emotions or sensations in the body, we can always come back to our breath to anchor and find that pillar of peace and calm within us. So just taking a few more moments to really sit with the breath. Watching the flow and the wave like motion. In and exhales. So just drawing your attention now to the meridian systems in the body. And the meridian system is set of pathways that run through the body from head to toe and they transport our chi which is our vital life force so as you breathe in we're breathing in this prana breath oxygen or chi as chinese and um, traditional chinese medicine will relate and as we breathe in this chi we're ideally looking for clear pathways from head to toe and when the pathways are clear for these meridian systems or nadis, the body is in balance and harmony. And this affects us not only on the physical level, but also the emotional, the mental, the etheric fields of our physical body, of our energetic bodies. And if we see any disharmony, discord, pain or tension, then we know that we're holding or harboring some form of blockage within these nadis, these meridian lines in the body. So just starting with the liver meridian, it begins at the big toe on the inside and runs up the arch of the foot through the calf. And the inside of the leg ends within the torso through the groin it goes through the liver and the gallbladder, entering into the lungs, coming up through the throat, into the head, circling in the lips, and then moving into the eyes. And the gallbladder meridian begins in the outer corner of the eye and travels down the lateral side of the body, so down the sides of the body, to the outer hip. And an internal branch goes through the neck and the chest, into the liver and gallbladder. And it runs down into the outer knee and ending at the fourth toe. So just take a moment to visualize those lines and pathways that we're working today. We're going to be targeting more into the groin, the outer hip, and the liver itself. And the liver sits just on the right side of the body, just underneath the diaphragm. A nice big gland, about four to six uh, kilograms, quite one of the largest glands in the body. And it's a site for detoxification and clearing waste. It's our primary chemical factory in the body. So 
we're going to be coming into the first shape from here, which is going to be a widening child's pose. So we can just take a moment before we slowly move out of our meditation. Now just setting yourself up so you feel nice and comfortable. We'd be here for five minutes. So you might want to use a blanket underneath the knees. You may want to use a blanket behind the backs of the knees to give you a little bit of space for support. And we want the toes to come together, the knees are coming apart, and we can sit back onto the heels. If that's a little bit uncomfortable to sit back onto the heels, you can always use a pillow underneath your seat to add a little bit of height. And if you've got a longer pillow or a bolster, you can maybe use this in front to rest the chest and the torso onto. So we're working into the inner leg line. We want to feel a nice stretch from the knee up into the groin. And if it feels more comfortable for you, taking the knees slightly closer in, just adjusting so that you feel you're in a position that's most comfortable for you. So I'm going to demonstrate to you the pose and then come out and just check that everyone's okay. And what you need to do is just listen to instruction. I'll tell you when we're coming in and out. So if you just allow yourself to come into the shape, pick up any props that you might need. You might feel nice to turn the face to one side or the other or rest the forehead down onto the earth if you don't need the bolster. So as you settle in, taking a few moments to let your breath enter into the body, entering into the spaces that we're working. And just beginning to acknowledge how your body feels as you first come into the shape. So we're going to work to our edges in each shape. So always finding a space that feels steady and comfortable that you can maintain for the period of time that we're going to be there. But also working into your edge or your boundary. So this could be as you first move in, you feel the body is happy where it is and you can stay there for the period of time. Or you might feel that come into the space, allow your breath to move into the body a little more. And then maybe you need to come out and back out a little bit. Or maybe you can edge a bit further into the body and take up a little bit more space within yourself. So just making any final adjustments, shifts or changes that you might need before you come into space of stillness. And in Yin, we're working to find the space of surrender and softening, stillness, patience. And as we build those Yin qualities within ourselves, it really starts to change in the mind and the emotional body. As we still the body, the mind, and the emotions follow. So just take a moment to really acknowledge what emotions you sense or feel as you come into the first shape. And as we become that witness, we can start to really observe and clearly examine each pleasant and unpleasant aspect of our experience without judgment or prejudice. As we start to develop this quality of watching and observing, we can slowly remove ourselves from feeling attached to the emotions that are arising. 
and as we find this softening, we just letting go. And we use our breath to guide us back into that space of calm. We can gently shift ourselves through anything that's overwhelming or strong within the body. The liver chi and the element of liver in the meridian system rules the health of our muscles, tendons, nails, hands and feet physically. And it's related to the element of wood. The needing to be both stable and flexible, rooted like a tree. And when we can root ourselves into the breath we can find that stability and maybe we might find a little bit more flexibility as we open and expand more fully with the breath so a nice way of trying to edge further into the body is by really directing the breath into the area that you're feeling any resistance or tension and imagining that the breath is filling the body up with this chi or light as you inhale and as you exhale, it's clearing and releasing anything that's strong or overwhelming, low vibrational. And Taoists believe that healthy liver chi is so central to our overall well-being. And that's because liver chi coordinates and regulates the movement of chi everywhere within us. So like the kidney meridian system that we did last week governs the jing or essential energy for our body. Liver chi is responsible for an easygoing disposition and internal atmosphere. So keeping that nice balance, we want to always find harmony within ourselves. We want to allow space for flexibility in balancing the emotions and the mental body. And as the liver stores glycogen, which is converted into glucose for energy, sometimes when we're tired or hungry, we feel that we have that. Um, hang up or feeling angry when we're hungry and this links into the liver chi being there for our overall well-being. So we're just going to take our last round of breath here and then to come out of the shape if you've got anything in front of you you can just move it out to the side and we're coming to lay down on our front. So we can take a nice long stretch out through the body. You might want to make a pillow with your hands. Or it might feel nice to rest the hands back beside you. It might feel good to tuck the toes under and stretch out through the heels. Or maybe just take a stretch out through the legs. Or bend in the knees and take a sway through the legs side to side. So coming into a rebound allows the body to move back into space of equilibrium. You just notice anything that comes up as you move into a rebound. And if there's any move shapes that you need to take, please always feel free to listen to your body and do what needs to be done. So we're just taking one more round of breath in our rebound. 
before we come into our next shape, which is going to be Sphinx. So when you're ready, you can gently prop yourself up onto your elbows. And we want to have a bit of a compression into the mid back, which is where our kidneys are. So stimulating the Jing energy in our body, which helps the liver. And we're going to slowly press up onto the hands. Or we can have the palms together where it might feel good to rest your head into your hands. And the closer you have the elbows in toward the body, the more of a, a bend you're going to get into the back, more of an extension. And if you take the elbows slightly further away from you, it's not going to be as strong. And here you might want to use a little bit of extra support, taking a pillow underneath the chest, Or if you've got your blanket, you might want to use a blanket underneath the hip bones. If it feels a little bit strong into the neck, if you work at a desk or if you drive a lot, it might feel nice for you to look down towards your mat to give the back of the neck a stretch. So either way, finding a position that allows you to rest into And then you can just start to close through the eyes. And become aware of the breath into the shape. So only here for about another minute and a half. So some um, ways of looking at the liver chi is from the emotional mental side. And as it's in charge of balancing the emotions, we have an imbalance and a balanced way of flowing through this medium system. And at this time we're working through and maybe many emotions are rising as we're in a very unusual circumstance and we have a lot of time to really sit with ourselves as we're in our homes and we're not operating at full speed like normal. And sometimes we find that it's hard to find the ability to really sit with what comes up. Well, it's actually a perfect time for us to really be honest with ourselves and to acknowledge where we're at without any judgment or harshness. And by practicing yin, you're giving yourself that space to really be there for you and to work towards finding compassion. So when we see in the same routines, we're kind of flowing with life and moving with busy. We don't actually take a moment to sit and acknowledge some of the emotions that we maybe push to the side. And as we're in our homes, we may be feeling some irritations or anger, maybe some frustration or boredom even. And in the liver chi, an imbalance in the emotional side would feel chronic anger, uneven or irregular emotions, impulsivity, frustration or irritation, or even inability to express anger. As we gently start to turn towards our feelings, we start to really diminish our preoccupation with 
irritants and acting out a harsh way. We can slowly start to increase our sensitivity towards ourselves, where we're at each day. We're moving more towards self-care. And most importantly, when we find a balanced liberty, we're working with compassion and harmony. So we're just taking our last round of breath here. And then we can slowly start to stretch again back down toward the floor. And maybe this time it might feel nice to make a pillow with the hands and rest the forehead down. Or maybe turning the head to the opposite side and relaxing your arms backwards. It might feel good to take some wriggles through the hips. And just breathing into the middle back, trying to create a little bit more space through the kidney area. Just taking a few more rounds of breath before we move into the next shape. So when you're ready, we're going to move our hands just beside the chest and slowly push up onto all fours. And then we can slide the right knee forward. And we're taking the foot up and over toward the right wrist. And then we can slide back through the left leg and come to sit into sleeping swan. So first, just take a moment to lengthen the spine up and feel if it's comfortable for you to stay here or whether you need to use a pillow or a blanket or a bolster underneath the hips. And you can either work from a lifted position here or you can start to come down over the leg. If you feel that that's a little bit too strong for the hips or for the knees, for the ankles, anything, we can allow the weight to drop all the way onto the left, uh, onto the right hip, and the left knee will gently bend. So you've created a nice space in that back leg and it's not stiff. And then you can twist yourself and relax the body down over that right leg. So the weight of the body is pushing into the floor and into that right hip. If that's still a little bit too strong for you, you can always work from the floor, taking eye of the needle. So we're gonna come down onto our back, taking the right ankle over the left knee, and you can either work to just push the knee open, or you can take the hands behind the back of the left thigh and pull that leg in toward the body. So this one we're working quite strongly through the outside edge of the hip and into the groin. And when we're working quite strongly into the hips, the uh, major storage site for tension and tightness. So just allow yourself to really come into a space that feels good and not painful. We don't want any sharp sensations. We want to feel that we can really let the body sink into it and soften into it. Remembering to come back to the breath. And just acknowledging what's in this space, what's in this hip, what comes up in this shape. Does your body respond physically, mentally, emotionally, or do you feel quite calm and comfortable here? We've just got a minute and a half left.
So as the liver is the site for detoxification, and a space for clearing waste, clearing what we don't need. Is there anything in your life or the way that you live your life that you could clear and remove that's not serving? So quite often we cling and hold and this causes a restriction or a, a going against, resulting in that tension or that that rigidity, but we need to find the flexibility, like the element of wood. We're strong in our beliefs, we're strong in our grounding, but we can move and adapt, change. So spring is a nice time to really give your, not home, but your physical home, a spring clean too. So maybe looking at ways in which we operate and move in the world, how we can clear, realign, and move into harmony and compassion. Doing really good guys, just 30 more seconds on this side. last round of breath here before we slowly prepare to come up to a lifted position. And then once you come to lifted, we can allow all of the weight to drop onto the left, onto the right hip, and we're taking the left leg forward. We're going to keep working on this right side by taking the right leg to stack over the top of the left. So if that feels a little bit uncomfortable, you might want to use a pillow and take figure four. So the knees coming slightly more out to the side and the knees rested just underneath your ankle. Or if you feel quite comfortable here and you want it, um, bring a little bit more work in and come into full shoelace and take the left foot underneath. So both knees are stacking, both legs are bent. And once you come into here, you might want to push into the feet, lift up the hips, squeeze the thighs together, and then settle back down. And if you feel one side is slightly higher than the other, or if you feel like a pillow might help, using a pillow or a blanket just to lift your hips up a little bit higher so that the pelvis can tilt forward. So we're still working on the outer edges of the hips, just a little bit more strongly carrying on with this right side. And again, if it's a little bit too strong for you to stay lifted, you can always come down to the floor. So we want to take our back to the floor, we can take a cross leg, either just holding here, or you can hold around the shins, the calves, or the feet and core. So this is a lot softer on the pelvis uh, at the back in the spine. We're just here for two more minutes. Just noticing how this changes the emotional body, the mental body, physical body. See if we can come back to that steady concentration on our breath. So 
to really allow ourselves to surrender into the shape. Try to acknowledge if there's anywhere that's clenching, maybe around the hips or the groin in particular. If the shoulders, the jaw, the eyebrows are clenching, see if we can really soften and relax these areas. Let's see if we're number 40 seconds, we're doing really good. So taking our last round of breath. And if you're on your back, you can slowly come to lift the position. And then if you've taken a shoelace, so both legs bent, we can lean back into the hand. Just take a moment here before we start to press the right foot to the floor. And we can wiggle the left foot round a little bit closer toward the hip. And if you've got one leg out, long and half shoelace, we can just again bring that right foot flat to the mat. So the knees lifted. We're coming into a twist from here. So just setting yourself up if it feels good to take the leg out or have the foot round to the hip, just adjusting. And again, using a pillow if you need to give you a little bit more support. We want to really make sure that that. Uh, right foot's pressing down into the floor and then we're allowing the thigh to really compress onto the abdomen and then we can hug round and hold in a twist here. You might want to use your uh, right hand behind you at the post. So here is the twist, we're working a little bit more strongly down the side of the leg also working to compress the abdomen and move into compression of the liver which is just on the right side of the abs it's underneath the floating ribs or inside the floating ribs underneath the diaphragm so the more we can compress the more we can twist and really bring out the spine internal organs are different in particular and as much as we can we want to elevate the spine so we're really lifting up into the crown of the head and opening the heart and in this shape we can really send the breath into the, the liver into expansion, bring more light and energy to flush through the liver. And as we exhale, imagining a clearing and a cleansing of the liver and the gallbladder. Just here for another minute and a half. Just taking our last three rounds of breath, maybe seeing if we can turn and twist a little more into the shape or breathe more fully. Look at the 
we can slowly start to come back to the center. And we can either come from here into a down dog shape by twisting all the way around, coming onto all fours, and then slowly coming up into a down dog. Or you might want to just unravel the legs and take the legs out long, maybe take some sway through the feet or hug the knees into the chest from a seat or laying down onto the back. Just taking a moment before we come to work onto the left side. For in your down dog, you might take some pedals through the legs. Maybe stretch out the ankles, the toes. Maybe take some side to side hip sways. If you're in a seat, we're going to slowly come over onto all fours. And then we can move into our sleeping swan onto the left side. So we want to take the left knee up toward the left wrist and the foot can go over toward the right wrist. And we're sliding that right leg back. And again, setting yourself up with any props you might need underneath the sit bones, the knee, back leg. You might want to adjust by moving the calf out of the way, pushing into the calf muscle or rolling the thigh out. Just move around into your shape, find a nice length through the spine. And then again, this side might feel completely different. So if it feels good for you to stay lifted, you can stay here. If it feels nice for you to slowly work your way down over the bent leg, you can come to here or flat. Or if it felt better for you to work with all of the weight rested onto the front leg and bend the back leg and then you can come over, you can work from here. We're again coming to work from figure four, just by the needle from the floor. So we're gonna be here for about another two minutes. So first of all, just acknowledging if there are any differences on this side, where do you feel any changes physically? And how can you best balance yourself on this side? Just last minute to go. Paying attention to the breath and the fluctuations of the mental and emotional body. And trying to relax any tension through the shoulders, the jaw, eyebrows. And just last 30 seconds. We're just taking our last breath. And then you can slowly start to pad yourself back up to a lifted. Well done. Slowly come in to rest all of your weight onto that left leg. And we can lean, slowly slide the right leg forward. And take in either half shoelace or full shoelace. Again, remember, if you need to take figure four from here and support that knee, use a pillow or bolster. If not, both knees are going to stack and the foot's going to come just to the side you can hold here. Or if it feels good for you to take full shoelace, we're taking that right foot underneath. Both knees are stacking. Try to squeeze the thighs together as you lift your hips up. And again, you may need to use a pillow or a blanket underneath the hips just to give you a little bit of a lift and a balance through the pelvis. 
and then you can either work from lifted or start to come a little bit further forward. That will bring a little bit more pressure into the hips. Just here for two more minutes. So mental qualities of liver chi is connected to our ability to make appropriate connections and natural coordination of the mind. So it's the ability to make plans and really follow through those plans, seeing them being put into action. And it's also our ability to evaluate situations and respond accordingly. So respond rather than react and finding space to work in a compassionate way so we're responding to each individual situation from a place of kindness peace and not irritation or anger or explosivity so again this relates back to finding that flexibility and the ability to adapt to each situation and circumstance or person approaches our life that we have to deal with And the gallbladder relates to our ability to follow our path in life and to avoid deviating and being put off by external influences. And also relates to the capacity to regain equilibrium after a shock or an obstruction in that path. And if we have an excess of liver or gallbladder chi, and we tend to make rash decisions and when the chi is really depleted, we experience hesitation and timidity. Just here for the last 15 seconds, hold on. Just taking the last round of breath, and then we can slowly start to lift up if we fold it forward and take a little lean back into the hands. And then, if we've taken shoelace, we can start to wiggle the underneath leg a little bit more around to the hip, pick up the knee, and place the left foot to the floor to come into our twist. If you're in half shoe legs again, you can stay with that leg underneath leg out and just work to place the left foot to the floor and then turn the twist. And if you've come onto your back, then just slowly coming up and choosing which option feels good. Again, it doesn't have to mirror exactly what you could do on the left side, it just has to feel like it's balancing you on this side. If you need to use your hand as a support, we can take left hand behind us this time and this time we're working to compress into the stomach and spleen which is our second site for the twist also working to open more fully into the liver this time so it works for compression and now an opening still working to breathe into the liver on the right side to lift up the spine, open the chest. And we're just here for the last two minutes.
We're just coming through our last minute, maybe seeing if we can breathe more fully into the abdomen, to really expand, and then as we exhale, we can twist a little bit further into it, maybe, if that feels good. So we get a nice ring out through the organs. Just taking our last round of breath. Before we slowly turn back to centre, and then we can either take the legs out long in front and take some rolls of the feet in and out, or it might feel nice to hug yourself small, or you can come straight down onto your back. Whatever rebound feels good with moving into Shavasana from here. So you can either work through to the very end, working into the groin and inner leg line by taking butterfly, soles of the feet together, knees apart, and we can come into a recline position. You might need to use your pillows underneath your knees, and then you can just rest with your hands onto your belly or out to the side. You could also work into easy pose, cross-legged, but reclined. So just taking a cross-legged position and reclining here. That, that was quite nice to release the pelvis. Or we can always work just in a regular position, Shavasana, feet on the floor, knees bent, and allow the heels to turn out, toes turn in, so the knees can drop in. Or we can take the legs out long, Maybe pillows underneath the ankles or back to the knees. Or a bolster underneath the back of the knees. Just finding whichever position feels really good for you to rest into. Make sure you've taken up as much support and space. And then once you've found a good space to rest into, just take a nice deep breath in. Passing the lips, gently sigh the breath out. Just taking as many breaths in and out of the body like that as feels good for you to come into a space of softening and relaxing. So here is where we allow ourselves to really assimilate all the work and the changes that the yin sequence puts on into our body, into our mind, into the emotional self. And coming back to finding that balance, that harmony, a really nice way of finding that compassion, compassion and harmony is the Karuna and Metta, or Metta and Karuna meditation, which is loving kindness and compassion. So just taking a moment to let yourself sink into the space. And just repeating in your mind after me. May I be free of fear and harm. Be content as I am. And be at peace with what comes. May you be free of fear and harm. Be content as you are. 
be at peace with what comes. May we all be free of fear and harm. Be content as we are. And be at peace with what comes. So when we move into balance, compassion, harmony, we allow ourselves to move away from the suffering of the ego, irritations of the mind, the anger, the pain that we feel. And we can move into complete surrender, softening, trust and love. allowing our liver to detox us from anything that's harmful, anything that's toxic, and anything we don't need. Just allowing yourself to really sit with the sensation of compassion for yourself, for others. And feeling the harmony of your body as you allow your breath to flow effortlessly and your body to deeply relax. As I experience anger, frustration, and irritation, I know others feel this too. May I be willing to be open to find these emotions with support. As you experience anger, irritation, and frustration, I know I have experienced this too. May we both be willing to open to these emotions with support. And as I experience compassion, I know others desire to feel this too. And may we all be willing to feel compassion fully. We suspend our usual compulsions to act out based upon our reactions. We can fully be free of the sufferings of the ego, of the mental body, and move into compassion and equilibrium and harmony, which is our right. So we just take a moment to breathe a little bit more fully into the body. Allow yourself to slowly wake up, wiggling the fingers, the toes, maybe making some bigger movements, bring the knees into the chest, or maybe swaying the knees side to side. Whatever feels good, so you slowly wake yourself up, maybe a full body stretch might feel nice. And then 
and when you're ready, you can slowly come onto your side. Let's take a moment to pause. Just breathe into yourself, breathe into your body. And then when you feel ready, you can slowly press yourself up. Just come in to find a comfortable seat. And then you can place one hand onto the heart, one hand onto the belly. And just close down through the eyes. Take a moment to tune back in. Just acknowledge any changes, what came up for you and allow it to release as you exhale, not holding on to your practice, letting it go. Just offering yourself gratitude, offering yourself compassion and offering yourself a space to come back into this harmony and this peace and every need. Inhale into prayer. Namaste. Thank you so much, everyone.